than just, you know, being out here. Um, obviously, like, putting in work and improving on maybe specific things, but also being out here with the OS again. Yeah, I mean, everybody saw our field goal percentage last year, and, you know, it's for a couple different reasons, but I think Will, you know, last year was tough for me because I, I always thought, you know, when I got here, my first year would be with him by my side. And that was tough because, you know, he didn't really have that, you know, steady veteran presence there. And, you know, just to get him back practicing with us and being able to learn from him and kind of just go through different things together has been everything I thought it would be and more. And just so happy to have him back. And you saw it, he's kicking well right now. And I think he's gotten to the point where his body's not his limitation anymore. It's just going to begin his mental, you know, fortitude back. And that's going to come back pretty quick. Blake, how much did that experience help you having to go through those nuances with different kickers and trying to learn their tendencies and that kind of thing? Right, yeah, it's different week to week when you have different guys cycling through. Everyone likes their their ball held differently and everything like that different personalities and it made it tougher. Um, I think having, you know, Zach here really helped me out. Someone who's been around for a long time and uh, Risen Phil did a great job helping me out too. And, and I think no one really wants a, a season like that where you, you cycle through kickers. Um, I think that's not something we have to worry about this year. Like you personally had, had a lot of success uh, in your debut season. Did, is there an area when you're looking back on that where you're like, I kind of want to refine this particular part and want that to get better? Yeah, we do a lot of analytic stuff after the season. And, you know, the coaches and I felt like if you look at my hit chart for the season, it kind of looked like you scattered a bunch of M&Ms around the field. And <laughs> it's really not supposed to look like that. Um, so I, I need to keep the ball out of the middle of the field a little bit better. And, you know, we have such good gunners that if you put the ball outside the numbers – the fair catch percentage goes up dramatically. I think that's the one improvement we can make is, is limit the returns a little bit more. Um, you know, we should utilize our, our great players and, and bang the ball down the field a couple times um, during the season, but forcing those fair catches outside the numbers is big too. Um, there's some great returns in this league, really athletic, and, and eliminating them from the game is, is a big priority this year. Does, does having Deontay Hardy as a, a return man also kind of you, you know, compete against some of the best returners in the league? Yeah, I mean, watching him in practice, it kind of gives you a feel for, you know, what those guys like to do, what kind of risk they're going to take. Um, Jonathan's a risk taker, and there's a couple guys around the league that kind of compare to him in that regard. And we scout that stuff like we're prepared for it when it, when it comes up during the season. Um, but he's a, he's a great look for us, and obviously we're lucky to, to have him on, him on our side and not under him during the season. Sorry, it's not like can you say, like, off the top of your head, who some of the best returners in the league are? Man, you, obviously, Jakeem Grant's really good. I don't know if Tyreek Hill is going to be returning punts this year, but um, I guess their backup return would be Jalen Waddle, which is kind of a nice one two punch. Not running two returner looks in the NFL usually, but if you had to, that'd be a pretty good, uh, pretty good pair. But we get, we, we have. I would say the best return in the NFL. Like when you got a, like an all pro gunner on one side and then yeah, pretty good one on the other side too, what does that allow you to do? Like, can, yeah. can you actually like kick the ball further than you would uh, normally? Like, is that even something you control? It's not really something I, I think about. I'd say it really comes up when you think about directional punting. So JT's gonna gonna draw a double team a lot just based on you know his prowess, how good he is. And I'm not afraid to punt to him when he's doubled because he's so good. It doesn't – sometimes it just doesn't matter. You put three guys out there, you probably beat them all. So, you know, it, that's what you think about when you're, when you're thinking about going right or left. Um, especially we play indoors, so you can really go both ways, wherever you are on the field. Um, it's just nice to have that security blanket. You're not going to hit a perfect punt every time. So having him out there is really is – a, is a really big positive. It's definitely not a negative. Is he hanging in there? <laughs> of course he is. Um, yeah, he, I'm really happy for him, you know, getting a couple opportunities other places. Um, 
you never thought in a million years I'd be his successor. Um, but he gave so much to me. And, you know, I sent him texts here and there. Um, but I know he's really focused. I know Will saw him probably two weeks ago, um, right before training camp, and he's bigger than ever. He said he looks really, really good. I think he's in a great spot in Miami. And um, wish we'd play him this year. But um, maybe in the Super Bowl. He's got to have to beat you. <laughs> yeah, he, he's got me beat on those. Um, I don't know where the tight shirts like he does. Yeah. For a reason. You're not going for the title like most, most gloves ever by an NFL pundit? No, he's uh, – I was working out yesterday, and I looked down at the far dumbbell rack where he used to work out. And I'm still down a little bit. <laughs> like like to, non exercise nose question, where's the weather channel? You mentioned analytics. The weather's a massive analytic. You're actually yeah, I want probably, to talk to you a little bit more. Yeah, I was going to say you're like our prize <laughs> interview here, so I'm going to go ahead and ask my question. Perfect. So preparing for – you have perfect conditions indoors for half your season. And then when you're going into a weather-related game that you think the forecast is going to be a little adverse, whether it be wind, rain, snow, what's the prep difference and what's the impact difference in those types of conditions? It's a great question. There is a little bit of air conditioner draft indoors. It's not very significant. Yeah, no, like I'm, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah, we play a couple games in some tough places this year. We play at Pittsburgh, um, at Cleveland, at Philadelphia late. So... Um, I mean, I, I try to start preparing for those games in the off season. So it's not a perfect day outside. I'm not going to shy away from going out and hitting some balls. Um, so throughout the season, I try to you know get some work in the wind. When it gets a little chilly out there, I go out there, um, even though we're practicing inside usually. Um, but yeah, I kind of we keep our eye on the weather throughout the week. Try to almost mentally prepare for that, um, and don't just show up on game day flying blind. But we, we do a lot of – we do wet ball drill before outdoor games. We had a couple of rain games last year. Um, but I'd say I probably pay attention to the weather more than anybody else in this building. Um, I use your app a lot, so I appreciate that. <laughs> Sounds good. That, that actually did spark a question. Does, does the roof get in your head at all? Like, does it? do you have to fight the tendency to kick line drives and, and just let it happen? <laughs> yeah, we, we obviously practice in here. I don't know how it's going to be now, a different head coach, but we used to practice in here 85% of the time, 90% of the time. Um, and I'm, I honestly don't think about the roof. I consider if I don't hit the roof, it's a bad punt. Yeah. So I like to kind of hear that sound <laughs> indoors. Um, yeah, in, co- in college, we actually had a way lower indoor, and they wanted me to keep it below the ceiling sometimes. And that almost – I felt like it, it messed me up a little bit yeah. because you're, you're not – trying for that trajectory in a game. So, um, but you should talk to Mickey about putting some more feet on this roof. Well, it's like a million bucks a foot or something like that. We can make it retractable. I don't think it would be deep, wouldn't it? So, did they want you to keep it low so that there could be a practice return? Yeah, they just... They not want you to, like, wreck the roof. Yeah, it's, it's just like, uh, it's, it's just for practice. I mean, the, the roof is a little durable. Yeah. But, um, like we did two days ago, we did going in punts. So, if you're indoors, you still have to work that. Um, just like we got to be outside. Do you? Thomas used to knock out lights this year. Do you, but they're different now. Yeah, they they uh, they improved the durability of the lights. Yeah. They, they didn't break. Dust falls off, but they don't break. Do you need to see the result of a punt or no. the ones that hit the roof? You know, yeah. you know what you did. Just I from could, how I it could, left your foot. I could probably give you an, a hang time within a tenth of a second. Just right just, after it just, left your foot, just, without look, without seeing it. Just knowing how loose it is or how tight it is, yeah. and kind of how it hits the ceiling. Yeah, I'll give some love to Zach Wood. He's having a great camp. You know, he snapped the ball better than I've ever seen him snap. And it just makes my job that much easier. Um, especially, I'd say, for holding even, even more than, than punting, just because, you know, the laces are so important. He can really control the laces. Um, and I'm just there as a safety blanket if, they, if they're not on the money. And just, you know, how consistent he is, it really gives me a lot of confidence back there. It gives Will a lot of confidence. Um, and he'll be here for a long time. Has Will gotten you on golf course yet? He has. Yeah. He, um, we try to go out every so often. We have a long break in between practice and meetings in the afternoon. That's all the real players are meeting. And um, – we haven't gone golfing in that time yet. We're he's, trying. He's a good player. We're trying to get a simulator in here, but it really? hasn't worked yet. You're as good as he is. 
No, nah, no, no. He spends more money on the clubs than I do. So Thomas used to talk about his funds like like in his golf bag. Yeah, do you, yeah. Do you, do you do that? Yeah, I, th- I think I think about that. You know, I go out there with a plan um, every time I, I go out to punt, and I've got different punts in different situations, especially outdoors with wind, turning the nose in differently, dropping the nose down, um, angling differently. So yeah. I consider it like kind of a, either a toolbox or right. bag clubs. Right. For the driver. Right? Yep. So what club are you working on the most in football? Right now? <laughs> you know, I, I think. Metaphorical club. Yeah, we <laughs> we did a really good job last year in between the 40-yard lines. Yeah. Um, and statistically, it backed it up. I'm just trying to improve a lot from about the 15 to the 35 on our side of the field, mainly directionally. Getting off the team. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Maybe a three wood from the middle of the fairway. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, Perfect. Thank y'all. Thank you.